All right, all right. I gave in and I bought some touch up paint for the strut towers and the rest of the engine bay where it needs the paint. So as that steering rack is drying, we're going to talk about degreeing the cams on this engine. So I just got done installing these new Tomei adjustable cam gears. This engine does have HKS cams in it and we're going to set top dead center, true top dead center, and then we're gonna degree the cams. So I'm gonna set this thing on a tripod and just narrate this entire video because it's a little technical and it would just be a lot easier that way. The first thing we have to do is set this engine to top dead center. And while we can use the crank pulley timing marks to get close, it's not true top dead center. These are simply references to get you close enough, but for degreeing cams, we need to find the center of the dwell point where the piston stays stationary at the top of the stroke as the crankshaft rotates. So we'll set a pointer on our degree wheel to zero to start off with, and then use a dial indicator to find true top dead center. There are other methods such as using a piston stop, but I don't have one of those and this dial indicator will work just fine. We're going to set the dial indicator on a mounting plate because the magnetic base that these dial indicators have, of course, won't magnetize to aluminum heads on this 2JZ or any other engine. This will, of course, vary depending on the engine you're working on, and oftentimes you will need a extended dial indicator rod if the spark plug hole is deep in the cylinder head like it's going to be on most inline four or inline six engines. I do have a link for those in the description of this video. So I'm gonna set the dial indicator somewhere in the middle of its stroke and then zero it out. Now you don't have to zero it out, but you just need to remember your starting number. Then we're going to turn the engine over some arbitrary amount such as 50 thousandths one way. You can see right here, I was going for that, but I got 55, so we're just gonna use 55 thousandths. Check the degree on the degree wheel and then rotate it 55 thousandths the other way and then check the degree again. These two numbers should be the same, which would indicate that we're at true top dead center. If there are any differences, we're simply going to add the two degree numbers together, divide by two, and then we have the, the degree to set the pointer to in order to have true zero or true top dead center. We can verify this by performing the test again, where we expect to see the same degree number each way. So in my case, I had 12 degrees one way, 13 degrees the other way. I add the two together, we get 25. Divide it by two, we get 12 and a half. I'm not gonna worry about half a degree. I move the pointer over to 12. I did the same test again, and then it was the same each way. So now that we've established true top dead center, we're gonna start with the intake cam for the degreeing. So you can see right there on the edge of the cam bucket, that little lip that's right there and then the shim is right there. That's what we're gonna be measuring the lift with. And that's gonna to correlate to our cam wheel. And we're gonna be able to monitor the intake opening and intake closing events. And we could also check center line, which I'm not as familiar with, but we'll give it a shot. You guys let me know if it's wrong, if you have done a lot more of these than I have. I'm not claiming to be the most experienced person in the world, but I like to use a different dial indicator for this now it's mainly because this tip sits right there on the edge of that bucket very well you could of course buy a different tip or you could attach a tig rod or something and bend it but this one is also digital it's just nicer to use um, it's just a different thread pitch than that other dial indicator that i have over there that we just used so i couldn't use those same long extensions to get down into the cylinder with my preferred dial indicator anyway the cam card will have specs on the timing it expects to see um, when you get to the intake opening event at one millimeter of lift and it will also tell you what it expects to see at the closing event at one millimeter of lift and then we will reference that to the wheel and from that we, were, we will either be good or we will have to advance or, or we will have to retard so let's see where we're at I'm gonna guess that the exhaust is way off because it was before with those cam gears. And that's why I'm trying these Tomei ones and also why I feel like I'm ready to make a video for this. Done it a bunch of times at this point with this engine. So if we take a look at the cam card from HKS here, this is a 264 intake cam. So you can see this is showing the duration of the actual camshaft itself and then it's giving us the specs that it wants. And these are all measured at one millimeter of lift for these 
Japanese cams. I think it can change depending on, you know, where the cam is from, but these particular ones are at one millimeter of lift. So what it's saying, sorry, I wasn't looking at the camera there, is it wants to see the open timing at one degree and the closed timing at 43 degrees. And then it wants the lobe center at 111 and the total cam duration, which just means how long that thing is open, 224 degrees. So let's first set this thing to one millimeter of lift and see if it opens at one degree. And then we'll spin it over until it's one millimeter of lift away from being completely closed and see if we're at 43 degrees. As I said, I'm not an expert when it comes to degreeing cams. It's been years and years and years since I've done this and the last set of cams I did it with, they didn't even have to be changed or moved. They were already perfectly in time per se. Um, out of the manufacturer. These HKSs are not the same way. These are old cams. There's been, you know, uh, various times that the head's been to the machine shop. The deck had, I think, 14,000s taken off of it. We're running a thicker head gasket. It's a 2JZ block. It's a 1JZ head. So things are not going to be perfectly aligned. Um, but anyway, if there's anything that I'm doing wrong in the video, let me know. And also, I wanted to just toss this in here to say if you're trying to do this and getting discouraged, don't get discouraged. It's just a little bit challenging and it's weird. So. Yeah, just try it out. Since the intake valve starts opening behind top dead center, we can start rotating this crankshaft around until we're about right in this area, and then we'll set up the dial indicator. Try to get some good camera shots for you to show you what the cam lobe is doing as I turn this crankshaft. So you can see as the camshaft rotates, the lobe will eventually contact the bucket and that's when we will start opening the valve, otherwise known as lift. And we're only wanting to open it about one millimeter of lift, which is something like 39 thousandths. The hardest part of all of this on a Jay-Z engine is finding a way to accurately measure the bucket as it goes through the rotation. There's not a lot of room. You can grab the edge as I'm doing here, but you are gonna need an extended rod or something that's bent under the camshaft to measure that entire range of the valve event. We're gonna keep turning the crank until we see one millimeter on the dial indicator and then we'll check the degree wheel and as you can see we're at about one degree behind top dead center for the intake opening event i wrote 1.5 but really it's probably fine if we just say one degree and here's what I'm talking about when it comes to measuring the full range of the valve event. I'm using a TIG rod to get under the camshaft so I can keep measuring as the cam reaches max lift. That bucket will go under the casting in the head and we need to make sure that the dial indicator doesn't move at all. Surprisingly, my TIG rod that's hose clamped to the indicator rod worked great. The most important thing is getting the angle of the indicator rod at the same angle as the valve, and that's what I'm showing here with the nut driver. If the angles are off, the indicator rod will move and your measurement will be way off. Here I'm just double checking the intake opening event again to make sure that my TIG rod contraption works and is accurate, and we can see that we have the exact same measurement, so we know that we're good. Now I'm moving on to the closing event, which will be one millimeter before the valve is closed, and then we'll check the degree wheel for that value. Remember the cam card showed 43 degrees after bottom dead center and right now we're at 42 degrees so we're looking good. The reason we have to do some math here is because the wheel I have is not dual scale. Better degree wheels would show the after and before top dead center values. Mine doesn't. So we just need to take our 138 degree value and subtract it from 180 to get 42. Checking the cam card, we're basically dead on on the intake side. The open event and the closing event are perfect within one degree, and that could be my own measurement error. I'm just gonna say we're perfect here. So now I'm gonna check the lobe center. To do that, we can add the open degree to the closing degree, plus 180, divide by two, which will give us 111 degrees, exactly what the cam card was calling for. There is another way to check this involving the dial indicator at max lift, which I'll show on the exhaust side of this video. So now we have our intake open, intake close, and intake center line all matching the cam card, which I don't think is by coincidence. At this point, we can assume that we did things right. And we can also visually see how long the valve stays open on the degree wheel. So we're good to go on the intake side with no adjustment. And now we can move on to the exhaust. We are now working on the exhaust cam. I've spent more time getting this little pointer in here for the, dial, for the dial indicator ready than even checking the timing of these cams. But we have it zeroed out. I checked where they're currently at and we have the opening event at 58 degrees and the closing event is at eight. Now the cam card I believe wants 50 
and two after top dead center. So we're like eight to 10 degrees out. We're gonna start at eight degrees. And to do that, this is actually happening early. So it wants it at 50, we're doing it at 58. So this is currently too advanced. So we're gonna loosen up these cam gear locking nuts here, and we're going to turn this counterclockwise. And each degree up here, each little line, I believe is two degrees at the crank. Yeah, it actually says it right there, you can see. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna grab the camshaft here and try to knock this thing over. Let's start with four notches. Okay, that looks good right about there. We have one, two, three, four. Should be eight degrees at the crank. And I did verify that this is not one tooth off. That's just, these things can be out sometimes. I actually swapped out my HKS cam gears for these Tomei ones because I wanted to make sure it wasn't just my cam gears, but I saw the same thing with the other cam gears as well. And <clears throat> I have timed this thing a bunch of times. If this were a tooth off, we would see a bigger variance than that. Each tooth is like seven and a half degrees because there's what, there's 48 teeth, you know, divide that by 360, I believe that would give you what each tooth does in degrees. So if I scoot this thing over by one tooth, maybe. No, this thing can't be a tooth off. If I were to move this over one tooth, let's say we moved this one tooth that way or one tooth that way, just imagine the white line being here or there. So just shift this over, it would be so much further off. So you know, it's very well lined up with that marking behind it. The cam is just, it just needs to be adjusted by about eight degrees. So we'll check it now. All right, same thing as last time, we're going to turn the engine over until the exhaust valve is at one millimeter of lift and then check the degree wheel. In this case, we're at 51 degrees, having to do the exact same math as last time because this isn't a dual scale wheel. For the closing event, I actually found an easier way to measure it. I find max lift where the dial indicator stops moving, I zero it out, and then I turn the crank until the number decreases down down to one millimeter, which would be one millimeter before the valve closes. This seems easier and more accurate than trying to rotate the engine backward to get back to one millimeter of lift before closing. And the value we had here was two degrees after top dead center. With the cam retarded eight degrees, our valve events are very close to spot on, and now we can check the lobe center again. There is the method I used last time with the calculator for the intake side, but I wanna show you how you can also check with a dial indicator. And also, I just noticed adding the open and closing events together plus 180 will give you the duration. If we divided that by two, we would get the lobe center that we got last time, but I had noticed that it gives you the duration before you divide it. Pretty interesting. To find center line with the dial indicator, first we need to rotate the camshaft to max lift. This means that the lobe is holding the valve open the most that it possibly can, and you'll know this because the indicator will stop moving and then we'll zero it out at this point. Then when we're rotating the camshaft back around, our zero point will be at max lift instead of max closed per se. From this point, we can basically do the same thing that we did to get to top dead center on the piston. We can take the measurement at some arbitrary amount from zero, like one millimeter, for example, and then do the same thing on the other side. Take the degree values of each and then add them together and divide by two to get your lobe center. I find that the measurements are more accurate this way instead of trying to turn the engine backwards. This allows us to only rotate the engine forward to find these values. The second value we had was 69 degrees, so 161 plus 69 divided by two is 115, which is almost exactly what the exhaust cam called for at 114 degrees. So in my opinion, we're good to go. 
Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. If it was helpful, let me know in the comments below. And also, if you have any advice for anyone else watching this video or for me, please also leave that in the comments below. As I said, I'm not an expert when it comes to degreeing camshafts or the science or engineering behind camshafts. I just wanted to get a video out there because I noticed that there was kind of a lack of camshaft degree videos, specifically for inline engines. There's a lot of stuff out there for like V8s, but not a lot for inline fours and inline sixes. So I hope this helped clear some things up. Again, I don't think that the numbers added up just out of coincidence. I'm pretty sure we did this right. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, hit the like video if you enjoyed it or hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.